crafters this is Raquel with paints and glitter and I'm so happy that you're here to watch this video I welcome you to my channel if you're new here and I am super excited to share with you this mini album that I am creating using the hopes and hexagon mini album dies from tonic studios and Sandy Nagel's decorate your life cute honeybee papers I will have everything linked down below and here what I'm sharing with you is that you're going to want to cut this out twice, but I'm going to share with you here that what I've used is the large, medium, and small page creating dies from this set. And what you're going to see here is that I have used my stylus to create the uh, hinge here that's going to be um, adhered to the bottom page. And so you can see small, medium, and large. If you want to keep it in that context it's going to be a whole lot easier for this tutorial now i am left-handed so what i'm doing is just using my ruler here to measure out the distance of paper that i'm going to fold over and create a hinge with and the reason uh, being that i want this to fold and open but i also want this little tiny page which is the smallest one to be actually adhered to the largest one and it's all going to make sense in the end, but I'm, I promise you this tutorial is super easy. And actually the second part of what this uh, little mini album is going to be, which is only two pages, is going to be even easier than this front one. So here's what you see now me applying the medium size page. But first I'm going to create my little fold and then it's going to create um, basically the hinge for the front cover of this book. And again, just using the stylus to make sure that I fold that over nice and straight because as you can tell the, these are hexagons of course and they can be a little bit tricky if um, if you're looking at the perspective of which uh, you're going to open the book so I decided that my hinge is going to be on the upper left hand corner and here I'm adding a little magnet on the back of that smallest little page and I'm going to cover that up and what I've done is I've also used some papers that coordinated with the collection just from my stash and to cover up any magnets and um, any unsightly pieces of paper. What I do is I just double it up with another piece right behind it. I'm using Nuvo uh, Deluxe Adhesive, which is my favorite, and a little bit of tape there just because that one piece was uh, looking like it needed a little more support. So I just went ahead and doubled that up and that is the back of that page now i'm adding the little yellow piece of paper or yellowish orangish i don't know <laughs> and i apologize for my voice i have a horrible cold but <laughs> wanted to bring you the tutorial so i'm going to continue on uh here what i've done is a little trick there where you place the tape behind the magnet fold it over and then that way you get the magnet precisely where you need it and of course it's going to get covered up with paper so that is the largest portion of the front page. And I also always uh, burnish the paper or uh, make sure that that adhesive is really nice and uh, uh, working. I don't know how you say it. <laughs> By using my bone folder, I can't get my words out. I apologize for that. And what you're seeing me do here is using the very first piece of that gorgeous paper collection that you want to get your hands on make sure you do so um, and what i did was i trimmed it a tiny bit smaller than that yellow paper to allow myself to have that border because it's going to be a decorative element in this book so here i go again i measured that medium size page and i decided this is going to be the easiest way to adhere it is to actually glue it to or the glue the hinge portion to the decorative paper and now I know that it's nice and straight it's going to fit exactly where I need it and now I can go ahead and add my matting layer to the base of that page and that little piece of paper is going to be exactly where it needs to be no need to really measure out anything and I'm going to cover up that portion which is the back of that page again using uh, the same exact uh, size paper only I'm cutting it down to make sure that it doesn't butt up to that fold and that way my page can open and close uh, comfortably and that's just a little pointer you always want to cut off a tiny little bit of that 
to make sure that whenever there is a fold in a mini album that the papers don't butt up against each other too much because then it won't align properly. That little rubber eraser, by the way, is a very, very important tool. If you're new to paper crafting, you're going to want to grab one. They're very inexpensive, but they make a world of difference, especially when using white cardstock. You don't want to leave any bits of adhesive behind because then it will oxidize and it will not look cute. So here we are adding another matting layer. And by the way, my tutorials come with a lot of information that's useful to you if you're new to paper crafting. So I, if it's repetitive, I do apologize, but I wanna make sure I share all the little bits that I've learned along the way. So this is gonna be the uppermost portion there. And I'm just measuring that little bit on the side that was my uh, hinge portion. And I am using uh, the green or no, the sky blue portion of the paper uh, to cover that up. I want to make sure that it is all nicely finished and on the inside. I don't leave any portion of my mini albums uncovered. Uh, that's just a personal preference, but it also helps to give it a nice, uh, nice sturdy finish. So here what I notice is I really, really like this little beehive. So I've cut it out and fussy cut around it because instead of just leaving it uh, as one dimensional, I'm actually gonna pop this up and I'm going to use uh, dimensional adhesive from Tonic Studios. You can also grab that using one of my links if you need to. And it's wonderful because you can cut it down. Uh, but here, I'm going to move on to another page and this is that medium page. And it's actually the inner portion. What I did was that I cut the matting layer in half and I'm gonna create a little pocket. All I did was add adhesive only on three sides of that little matting layer of the decorative paper and then I'm going to add that to the base and as you can see I'm also making sure that I burnish everything that was a word I couldn't remember and on the front what I've done is that I cut fussy cut this banner that says the name of the paper collection it says honeybee and I wanted to make sure that I incorporated that into this book, but as you can tell, it's so wide compared to my little book that I, there was no way I was going to be able to do it unless I cut it down. So I tried to be a little bit creative here. I took some creative license and I went ahead and added it to the little pocket that I created. And now I'm going to cut away the portions that will not fit on the book. And it'll still give me a really pretty decorative element in, in the book and also allow me to use a portion of the paper that I really liked. So that's another little tip that I can give you. Whenever there are portions of paper that you, maybe you can't use, try to make the most of it. It's still fun, it's still gonna look cute. And as you can tell, now I have another little pocket here and it's almost like a hidden pocket because of the way the graphics work out on the paper, but I'm really quite happy with the results of that. And because there are magnets there, I can open and close those pages. Now, here I cut another little portion of the paper that I did not want to go to waste. And it's the little tiny bees. And this is also going to serve as the little uh, tag that helps me open the page. So that's another creative way to use your dies. I just wanted to make sure that I aligned it uh, exactly where I thought it should go to uh, cover up a portion of that background, a, a tiny little bit there, um, so that you don't necessarily see what's coming next. And, um, and then on the back, instead of just leaving it blank, I went ahead and added another little bee using the same die. And here I'm adding these little flowers, but later on I ended up taking them off and adding the, a different color flower. And you'll see it at the end in the pictures. But here you can see I was able to cut down the foam adhesive exactly to the size that I needed. And I will add this to my cover as a little 3D element. Here what you're going to see is another element that will be in this mini album. Now we'll be coming back to this, but this is from the Treasure Dreams die set from Tonic Studios. It is linked below as you can tell in the little note in the upper right hand corner. 
and the way that this folds over is that it has a bunch of little score lines and you're basically going to always fold them in a mountain fold and this is uh, going to create a, um, a 3d pop-up mechanism if you will and it comes together really easily it kind of looks daunting initially but you'll see as I put it together that it's kind of self-explanatory the little tabs that are the smallest fold over and adhere exactly to that little edge and that's all you want to make sure that you do is that you fold everything in, in a mountain fold and then add your adhesive and make sure you give it some time to dry I do always remind people that these videos are sped up so that you don't spend too much time watching them but that this does take some time to allow everything to dry I walk away from it I come back later and that way all of the papers uh, will dry really nicely before I add them to a mini album especially if they're going to be a moving portion so here you see again I fold all of these little tiny pieces and these meet back up with the prior fold and you're going to do this a total of two times so this portion is cut out twice and it'll join together and you're going to see in a moment how um, so this was just an element of surprise that I wanted to add to this mini album and I cannot wait for you to see how it turns out it is just so cute and I can't wait to use it again and again so here we are again I'm folding that over and applying my little bit of glue and then just being patient applying some pressure there it helps to use a bone folder or anything narrow that you have so you can apply pressure but you'll see there how I did that and it repeats itself so once you get the hang of it you'll see how easily this is going to come together all right now the other portion you just grab it and fold it again in a mountain fold even though it's opposite of what you just did and those are going to meet up with the prior one and you see that one little little bit popped open but i'll go back and fix that And while you're watching this, if you haven't picked up the digital paper, I'm sorry, the paper collection from Sandy, I wanted to let you know that you can get, uh, she does have a link for you to get the digital version of it if you would like to purchase that. So um, that is another option for you. Now this mechanism here has these little bits that have uh, almost like little arms. Those are going to go on that narrow portion of what you just put together and you just want to move that center portion out of the way apply your adhesive and then put on those little arms if you will that's what it reminded me of i don't know why now here the little portion that's actually going to pop up all you have to do is fold it in half that way you make sure the edge meets the edge of the um the base portion and you're going to see that I'm just butting it up right to the edge there and then you can pinch it and you're going to repeat this on the top piece again applying adhesive you can fold over that piece that has the little circle on it and then make sure it goes all the way to the edge and apply your pressure there and now these two come together by adhering again the same piece on the other side and making sure that it's all the way to the edge as well and again if, it, if things look backwards to you it might be because I'm left-handed <laughs> I tend to do everything to the left but it's actually it comes together quite easily and you'll see here that once those two pieces are together it's going to become one piece of course but all of it fits perfectly. So kudos to Tonic Studios for creating this mechanism because it, the end result is just so cute. Now in the middle, take the two little tabs and make sure they're both underneath the paper. So it's gonna be under and under, and then just apply pressure there, hold those two together. And that's gonna be the center of the mechanism. And this is later gonna be covered up by another decorative element. And you'll see how 
but we're going to set that aside while we continue decorating the back of this book. Okay, so this is the second portion or the second page of this mini album and it mirrors the front, but I did put it together a little bit differently. So if you pay attention, you're going to see how I did fussy cut the little wagon from the paper collection because or the little wheelbarrow I thought was so adorable. So I decided to fussy cut it and make a pocket out of it. This is going to be the smallest page of this portion here. I apply my glue and I'm going to adhere it to the base and then only on the three sides of the little wheelbarrow to allow me to have that little pocket that I mentioned. And now I'm adding a little magnet to the back and I'm going to cover it up with decorative paper that's already been matted and I did use the light green paper and look at that adorable little bee. I mean, they're so cute. So now I'm adding this to the decorative paper that's going to go on the medium size pa page. Sorry. So this is a whole lot easier than I did it the first time around. I'm just going to apply my adhesive here and this is going to go on that yellow matting paper. Here I'm going to add another magnet and that's going to help my page stay closed. And this will go on the medium size page. And now you, you'll see that the hinge is on a different side of the page. So I'm going to cover the back so it's nice and finished. And here on that hinge, or I'm sorry, before I do the hinge, I'm applying a little decorative piece here. And this is just a little tab. And it's also from Tonic Studios. And it does have those little hearts. I thought it was so adorable. So I did use some metallic paper as my accent on this mini album. And there's a little tag also that fits inside that pocket. And now that little hinge is going to be adhered to the decorative paper that will fit on the tallest part of the page and again I added another magnet and it's being held by the prior one in case you're wondering and it just made life so much easier to do it this way I wish I had done the front page this way but you live and you learn so now all of this gets adhered to the base and of course you know what's coming next another magnet <laughs> and this is going to help this book stay closed when we want it to. It's a wonderful way to um, just add interactive pages and make life easier for yourself. Now here I'm going to cut this down. I thought that I would make a different type of hinge, uh, but I decided to just cut it down and I'm going to just leave it as such and I'm going to add this to the front page. So here's the front. Just wanted to share with you it still has that fold I didn't cut it away and I'm going to now apply my adhesive on the fold of that front page and this is going to create um, the hinge here that's going to bring both of these pages together but what I do is that I measure out all of the edges first and then I'll apply some pressure on that border there. You want to make sure you do that because of this uh, shaped style of mini album. It's very important that all of the edges meet so that way you don't get any wonky pages. And of course this is only two but it goes without saying that that's exactly what you would do if you add even more. So here what I wanted to do is uh, because I had that little flap on the uh, what's going to be now a reinforcement. Uh, I just folded it over and then I added it to the base. And that way I have a really nice and sturdy little book here. And on the front one, instead of folding it over so that I don't have too much bulk, I just cut it away. And the die set just uh, will cut all of the papers like that. It will have that tab on the edge because that's what allows you to create a book but you can cut it away as needed. Now I'm going to mat this with the rainbow um, design paper. It was so pretty I wanted to make sure 
that I added that to this book and I did put a magnet behind it again to allow me to open and close the book as needed. And if you could tell there, I left a portion without adhesive and you'll see in a minute why. But this one here, I'm repeating the same paper just to make it cohesive for the inside of this little book. And on this one, I'm applying adhesive on the entire page. And here's why. I created a little pocket so that way I could add either a little tag or any other little element as of surprise. At the end, what I'll do is add the little templates that I like to uh, include in all of the mini albums that I make. Now here's the fun part for the interior. I didn't leave it plain. I went ahead and cut out using the circle dies that came with the die set, all of these adorable little images from the paper collection, as well as two plain circles. And here's that hinge or pop-up mechanism. I'm going to add it as close to the inner fold of this book as possible, applying adhesive only where needed. And that way, this is going to create that pop-up surprise. So you can see right there, if you need to pause the video, you can to see where it was that I added the glue. And I'm going to fold that over and I'm not going to fiddle with it. I'm just going to let that dry. So I'm moving on to other portions of the book. This is where I add all the little decorative pieces. I added another little pocket. And this was for the back of the book. So here you get to see I adhered the top portion flat and then the bottom portion I only had added adhesive to three sides. And I also added a little decorative element as a border to this little pocket just to uh, switch it up a little bit. And there I added two more little tags. And this is a super easy little book that you could put together so quickly. Now on the inside, here are the two little frames. I just added adhesive now to the base so that way I could uh, add those circles. And that's gonna give the uh, recipient an opportunity to add photos. And then I just added the smaller little elements there so that they wouldn't pop out of the edge of the book. They're just gonna fit very nicely inside of the book because of the shape of the pages, of course. And it looks so, so pretty when it's all said and done. So I want to thank Sandy for allowing me to play along with her paper as a guest designer for this month of January. It was so fun to use this and I hope that you guys love the results as much as I do. This could be such a wonderful gift either for a grandparent of a new baby or this could be wonderful for a birthday, any, any celebration. So I do hope that you have enjoyed this and as I always say that you can be inspired and be blessed. Thank you for watching.